Chapter 21 Dorothy's Magic Belt Dorothy passed several very happy weeks in the land of Oz as the guest of the royal Ozma, who delighted to please and interest the little Kansas girl. Many new acquaintances were formed, and many old ones renewed, and wherever she went, Dorothy found herself among friends. One day, however, as she sat in Ozma's private room, she noticed hanging upon the wall a picture which constantly changed in appearance, at one time showing a meadow, and at another time a forest, a lake, or a village. How curious, she exclaimed, after watching the shifting scenes for a few moments. Yes, said Ozma, that is really a wonderful invention in magic. If I wish to see any part of the world, or any person living, I need only express the wish, and it is shown in the picture. May I use it? asked Dorothy eagerly. Of course, my dear. Then I'd like to see the old Kansas farm, and Aunt Em, said the girl. Instantly the well-remembered farmhouse appeared in the picture, and Aunt Em could be seen quite plainly. She was engaged in washing dishes by the kitchen window and seemed quite well and contented. The hired men and the teams were in the harvest fields behind the house, and the corn and wheat seemed to the child to be in prime condition. On the side porch, Dorothy's pet dog Toto was lying fast asleep in the sun, and to her surprise, old Speckles was running around with a brood of twelve new chickens trailing after her. Everything seems all right at home, said Dorothy with a sigh of relief. Now I wonder what Uncle Henry is doing. The scene in the picture at once shifted to Australia, where, in a pleasant room in Sydney, Uncle Henry was seated in an easy chair, solemnly smoking his briar pipe. He looked sad and lonely, and his hair was now quite white, and his hands and face thin and wasted. Oh, cried Dorothy in an anxious voice, I'm sure Uncle Henry isn't getting any better, and it's because he is worried about me. Ozma, dear, I must go to him at once. How can you? asked Ozma. I don't know, replied Dorothy, but let us go to Glinda the Good. I'm sure she will help me and advise me how to get to Uncle Henry. Ozma readily agreed to this plan and caused the sawhorse to be harnessed to a pretty green and pink phaeton, and the two girls rode away to visit the famous sorceress. Glinda received them graciously and listened to Dorothy's story with attention. I have the magic belt, you know, said the little girl. If I buckled it around my waist and commanded it to take me to Uncle Henry, would it do it? I think so, replied Glinda with a smile. And then continued Dorothy. If I ever wanted to come back here again, the belt would bring me. In that you are wrong, said the sorceress. The belt has magical powers only while it is in some fairy country, such as the land of Oz or the land of Ev. Indeed, my little friend, were you to wear it and wish yourself in Australia with your uncle, the wish would doubtless be fulfilled, because it was made in fairyland but you would not find the magic belt around you when you arrived at your destination. What would become of it? asked the girl. It would be lost, as were your silver shoes when you visited Oz before, and no one would ever see it again. It seems too bad to destroy the use of the magic belt in that way, doesn't it? Then, said Dorothy, after a moment's thought, I will give the magic belt to Ozma, for she can use it in her own country, and she can wish me transported to Uncle Henry without losing the belt. That is a wise plan, replied Glinda. So they rode back to the Emerald City, and on the way it was arranged that every Saturday morning Ozma would look at Dorothy in her magic picture, wherever the little girl might chance to be, and if she saw Dorothy make a certain signal, then Ozma would know that the little Kansas girl wanted to revisit the land of Oz, and by means of the Gnome King's magic belt would wish that she might instantly return. This having been agreed upon, Dorothy bade goodbye to all her friends. Tick-Tock wanted to go to Australia too, but Dorothy knew that the machine man would never do for a servant in a civilized country, and the chances were that his machinery wouldn't work at all. So she left him in Ozma's care. Bellina, on the contrary, preferred the land of Oz to any other country and refused to accompany Dorothy. The bugs and ants that I find here are the finest flavored in the world, 
declared the yellow hen. And there are plenty of them. So here I shall end my days. And I must say, Dorothy, my dear, that you are very foolish to go back into that stupid humdrum world again. Uncle Henry needs me, said Dorothy simply, and everyone except Bellina thought that it was right that she should go. All Dorothy's friends of the Land of Oz, both old and new, gathered in a group in front of the palace to bid her a sorrowful goodbye and to wish her long life and happiness. After much handshaking, Dorothy kissed Ozma once more and then handed her the Gnome King's magic belt, saying, Now, dear princess, when I wave my handkerchief, please wish me with my Uncle Henry. I'm awfully sorry to leave you and the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman, and the Cowardly Lion, and Tick-Tock, and, and everybody. But I do want my Uncle Henry, so goodbye, all of you. Then the little girls stood on one of the big emeralds which decorated the courtyard, and after looking once again at each of her friends, waved her handkerchief. No, said Dorothy, I wasn't drowned at all and I've come to nurse you and take care of you, Uncle Henry, and you must promise to get well as soon as possible. Uncle Henry smiled and cuddled his little niece close in his lap. I'm better already, my darling, said he.